Pixel 8 Pro. This is the best Pixel yet. I mean, as it should be because it's the newest one, but is it possibly too much of a good thing? Let me explain. The theme of this eighth generation Pixel device is refinement. And you realize that from the instant you pick up this phone. I tweeted this out you know, a few days ago, but I've been drawn to just picking up the Pixel 8 Pro just because of the refinement in the hardware and how it feels in hand. We got two of my criticisms about the Pixel 7 Pro addressed this year with the Pixel 8 Pro. First off, the matte glass back and the flat display. Here are the specs of the device that I've been using for the past week. Of course, it's the Pixel 8 Pro in Bay Blue, Tensor G3 chipset, 6.7 inch OLED super actual display with a one to 120 Hertz refresh rate, up to 1600 nits in HDR and 2400 nits in peak brightness. One thing that cannot be overstated is how good the new Pixel 8 Pro feels in hand. I know most people, of course, will put a case on their phone, but the natural ergonomics of this device feel really good. You know, this actually seems to be the year of the curves with more manufacturers realizing that the sharp industrial edges of these phones look better than they actually feel in hand. And coupling the rounded corners of the Pixel 8 Pro with the matte glass is a perfect pairing. Also, we have to address the elephant in the room and it's a very pretty elephant and that's bay blue. Now, I am normally not a color phone guy. I honestly just get like black or gray with the occasional, you know, white phone, get crazy with the white phone, but I have to give them their flowers here. This is actually a very beautiful color and it's super eye catching. And honestly, when I was actually, people were taking pictures of me with this device and I just wanted to smile at it. Like it's just a fun, happy looking phone. And it's kind of, of a refreshing take from like, you know, the black slabs that we all carry around. Now, when it comes to the camera, I've been on record stating that if there's a moment that I want to capture, my phone is not the first thing that I'm reaching for because I'm crazy and I typically carry around a camera with me, a mirrorless camera, either my Fuji X Pro 2 or Sony A7 IV. Something's on me, on deck to take photos wherever I go. But the Pixel phones have always typically been the exception to that rule because the image pipeline for stills is just fire. It's the phone that I truly want to use for capturing stills with my family and friends because it gets the skin tones just right. It has a certain amount of warmth to it and it just feels like there's life in the images versus the sharp clinical digitized look from most cell phones. I even know some people that buy and use the Pixel devices strictly for a point and shoot camera. Like they buy that phone for point and shoot photography and they may already own another phone for you know, like iPhone or whatever other phone they have for you know communication and everything else, but they actually buy the Pixel phone for photography. That's pretty big. Typically every year you can look forward to Google giving you some cool software features like AI post-processing photo magic. And of course they did that this year, <laughs> we'll get to that, but they also upgraded the hardware this time, which is actually kind of out of character for them considering it took them four generations to even add a second camera. We now have a new set of faster lenses across the board with the Pixel 8 Pro. The main camera having a 50 megapixel f1.7, which is like a 25 millimeter equivalent versus last year's f1.9. So it's a little bit faster there. The Ultra wide is a 48 megapixel 11 millimeter equivalent at f 1.9 versus last year's f 2.2 so we get some extra speed there as well and rounding it off the telephoto is a 48 megapixel 112 millimeter equivalent at f 2.8 versus the f 3.5 that we had last year which is a pretty big leap these faster lenses of course let in more light and are better for low light photography across the whole set along with all the new hardware google actually gave us new ai features as well Magic Editor, Best Take, and Video Boost are the most notable in my opinion. I am most looking forward to the Video Boost feature. That's where you upload a video clip to the cloud and actually processes the image and spits out a different version of it that has improved dynamic range and more detail overall. Also, that's the feature that gives you the video night sight. My future self might hate me for this, but I wanna create a video montage or something that's like cool and cinematic using the clips processed through Video Boost and night sight video. It could take forever to process it and get the clips back and edit them and all that, but I think I'm up for the challenge. Overall, there has been some solid improvements when it comes to the camera for stills and video. And I think the days of worrying about Android video being up to par with iPhone are over, to be honest. Of course, iPhone and Apple have, you know, done huge things with SSDs and ProRes and 422 10-bit and all that stuff. I think that's definitely yet to come on Android, but if you just want solid video, you have good lighting, I think the Pixel 8 Pro is more than enough. 
And if you know Google, you know software does not stop with the camera. All of the great software features are still here. One of my favorites being call screen. The Pixel is typically the phone that I use on my business line. So whenever I receive a call from potential customers, having call screening is super valuable. It's like having a real life assistant and something that I miss whenever I get spam calls or a call from the doctor's office on my iPhone. Speaking of doctor's offices and calling businesses, call assist is super clutch for navigating those phone trees and automated systems. And one of the crown jewels of Pixel software and Google Google Assistant is voice to text. It's perfection. And it has been for years, honestly. I've even gone as far as to script YouTube videos in their entirety with the voice recording app, and it's 98% accurate, you know, accounting for ums and pauses and everything. Somehow, Google Assistant has also gotten better <laughs> with a more realistic voice and now offering an article summary uh, where you can have it read aloud or give you a summation of whatever article's on screen, uh, even letting you move the playhead back and forth, which is super cool because we are, of course, inundated with so much news nowadays, and being able to actually, you know, turn an article into an audible summary is super useful. All of these features make the Pixel 8 Pro and Google Assistant feel like a legit personal assistant. And it really feels like Siri and Alexa and everything else out there, I guess, will never really catch up at this point, especially after we get the assistant with Bard, like it's game over. And it honestly has been game over for years. And it's something that Google always does really well. Now let's talk about the one thing that you interact with most on any phone, and that's the display. Nowadays, most displays on flagship phones are really nice and it's easy to take that for granted. But I have to highlight it here because of the story past that Google has had with Pixel displays from the Pixel 2 XL which was probably one of their worst displays ever. It had the crazy off axis blue shift, dull natural color tuning. Uh, and it took like six generations later for us to get the best display that's ever been on a Pixel. And of course it should be the best display because it's the newest one, but they're actually calling this super actual display. The biggest takeaway for me when it comes to this screen is that it's super bright, super vivid, and I love it. Coming in at 2400 peak brightness is nuts. Now that eye searing 2400 nits, isn't sustained for long periods of time, but on a bright sunny day in Southern California, it comes in handy. The Pixel 8 Pro display is in the same league as the Samsung displays, which I personally consider to be best in class, best in industry. The only difference between these panels is the fact that the calibration and tuning is slightly different on Samsung phones versus any other. Samsung definitely has more saturated and punchy images uh, on their displays. And that's something I prefer, to be honest with you. Google is still offering something more true to life and natural, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, but it comes down to your personal preference. I do wish that the adaptive mode on the Pixel A Pro was a little more saturated or they had a saturated punchy mode that you could put the screen in. I would like that too, but we don't have that yet. I'm honestly just really happy that we have a flat display this time around. The curved display was beginning to feel a bit dated and it was one of my main criticisms for the Pixel 6 Pro and 7 Pro. Google has honestly checked all my boxes this time around and solved most of the issues that I had with the previous Pixel devices. Curved screen, fixed. Poor battery life, fixed. I'm getting six, seven, eight hours of screen on time. It's amazing. Overheating with the Tensor G2, fixed. This new G3 processor is powerful, efficient, and it's, it's a breeze. It's way better than the G2. Glossy back, fixed. We have matte glass now. It's, it's, these are the things that I've wanted from this new overhaul and refreshing design for the Pixel. But let's talk about why I said that this may be too much of a good thing. Honestly, Google is an advertising and software company that has come into their own with hardware, and they're making the best Android phones out there in my opinion. When it comes to these new AI photo features like best take, it's a little cringe for me sometimes, like no lie. Like this is of course a super useful tool for group photos, but photos to me, in my opinion, as a photographer, <laughs> are memories and moments in life that should be cherished for their imperfections. To copy and paste faces on bodies is magical and all, but it feels a little wrong sometimes, especially when it comes to changing my daughter's face. Like, I just can't do it. Like I said, this is probably not a popular take, but this is coming from someone that doesn't even really like Snapchat filters. Like, <laughs> I just wanna preserve the moments and capture it as it was captured uh, as it happened. I don't know, it's weird. Artificial intelligence, honestly, is becoming more and more prevalent in our daily lives. And with this new tool, we are figuring out what boundaries to set, you know, what we're comfortable with, what we aren't comfortable with. But I stand by this statement. The Pixel 8 Pro is the best Android phone out right now. And Google continues to separate themselves in ways the competition cannot even compete with. 
amazing and relevant software, AI features that make life easier and push the limits of how we edit photo and video. And this is the first pixel that I can honestly recommend without compromise. Music